I was on my way to market to go and get some candles. Mr. Hensock forgot to get them last week. Did you know that's the back of the Greyhound Hotel? The fancy building from the front with its smooth stone and lovely large windows. It certainly does not look quite so splendid from the back. But I suppose that's okay because Arkwright's visitors only see it from the front. They meet him there for business lunches apparently to discuss the buying and selling of raw cotton and spun yarn. It certainly has made the marketplace look a very important area. Not like when I was a young girl. There used to be a stream running right the way through the middle of the marketplace. That was before they dammed it up to make the mill pond. I'd never even seen a clock before the Greyhound Hotel was built. And that reminds me, I'm late. Me too. Best get to market. Bye bye, Mrs. Bye. Bye. Not got the girls with you today? No, it's Simeon and Elijah's turn to come to church this week. The girls are at Sunday school, learning to read and write. Marvellous. You know, that's such a wonderful skill to be able to learn to read and write. My two never got the opportunity. They still can't read a word. Of course, they were too old when the Sunday school was built. I'm always amazed at the things Phoebe can do. She's only five, but she's such a help at market, counting things up. Working out what we owe. So helpful. Absolutely it is. Now, I meant to ask you, how's that new family from Derby getting on? Yes, they've moved into the house next door to us on North Street. They can't believe how much space they have. They are very big houses on North Street, aren't they? Really something lovely. Mind, not quite as big as Willersley Castle there. It's such a beautiful house. Did you hear? Mrs. Arkwright is expecting another baby. No. It'll be 11 in total. 11 children? My word. Just as well they've got that big grand house. Mind, I do feel sorry for old Mr. Arkwright. He spent all that money building it and he never got a chance to live in it. Such a shame. But I heard that young Mr. Arkwright is making the most of the gardens. Yes. You know, he grows melons and grapes and pineapples. My word, pineapples? What an exotic fruit. I think I'll keep to my apple pie, which reminds me, I best get back to my baking. Goodbye, Goodbye Mrs. Froggett. Does it, Mrs. Froggett? That's right, Mrs. Henstock, but it's easy to feel motivated when you've got such a beautiful house as this one to live in. These houses along North Street, they are something grand, that's for sure. Did you know I've got a cellar? You haven't. I've got a cellar downstairs to store food in. I've got a room on the ground floor to cook in. Then a, another room upstairs to sleep in. And at the top of the house, there's an attic. And it's so well lit with those windows that Mr. Froggett does his weaving in it. Mr. Arkwright was a clever man to design it like that, wasn't he? He was indeed. What brings you up here anyway, Mrs. Henstock? Well, you know those new neighbours, the ones that moved up from Derby? 
I thought I'd bring them a blanket as a welcoming gift. And they're in luck. I've got some nice tasty sausages for them. We had to send our pig to the butchers last week, so we've got some nice meat to gift on. That's lovely, Mrs. Henstock. Your pig was good and fat. I imagine she'll feed you for a while. And that reminds me, I've got some carrots that have just come up in the garden. I'll give you some for your pork roast. Come on. Oh, fantastic. Here you are, Mrs. Henstock. Finest produce of Cromford. Oh. They are lovely carrots indeed, lovely carrots indeed. We are lucky, Mrs. Froggett, to have all this greenery, place to grow our vegetables and keep our pigs all year round. I know, it certainly is different to life in Derby. I'll never forget when I first moved into this house and found we had an outdoor toilet. Of course, we share it with the neighbours, but it's still such a luxury. Oh. What I'd give to have an outside toilet, Mrs. Froggart. How lucky you are. Well, I best get, take these carrots and go and get my dinner ready. Goodbye, Mrs. Froggart. Bye, Mrs. Henstock.